Hello, viewers. I am Shushai Adana. This program is to be broadcast through DW YouTube. My guest today is Ambassador of Isha Asgadom, a civilian member of TPLF who served as an Ethiopian ambassador to Germany, Ethiopian ambassador to Israel, Ethiopian ambassador to the United Nations, just to mention a few among others. Stay with us. We will try to touch quite lots of things. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador, for being the guest of this program. My pleasure. Okay, uh, just to start with, uh, looking uh, back at those 27 years, uh, where is Ethiopia today? How do you describe the current state of affairs in the country, in other words? Thank you very much. Uh, you know, 27 years back, Ethiopia was uh, a bankrupted state in all aspects of uh, bankruptcy. We had a, a disastrous economy. The government uh, was in shambles. The Dirk government has fallen and a new uh, government was in the making. Uh, Ethiopia was known for all the bad things in this world, for famine, civil war, uh, what have you. Okay. In fact, uh, as I remember it then, uh, many uh, was inside the country and outside the country felt uh, Ethiopia would be another Yugoslavia uh, or Somalia at that time. Uh, therefore, uh, it is just uh, unfortunately a short memory of many Ethiopians that uh, they uh, uh, fail to uh, to recognize how far this country has come uh, from that situation. And then what happened in 27 years is Ethiopia has come uh, to the level where it was uh, recognized uh, as equal among states in the international community. It has its own economy growing uh, for a long time. It has its foreign policy uh, independently drawn and strictly implemented uh, considering the interest of the country. Uh, simply, it became uh, a voice uh, for itself and for Africans. Uh, that does not mean that there wasn't any challenges in the country, but uh, peace was uh, uh, restored, uh, maintained. Uh, uh, the constitution was being implemented uh, to a large extent, and democracy was on its uh, uh, lower stage, but growing from time to time. Uh, you know the story, the ruling party, EPRDF, felt that it was not delivering as much as it should do after being at the helm of government for uh, 27 years, and it, it wanted to do better. Mm -hmm. It wanted to reform itself. It wanted to serve the people in a better way. It wanted to uh, create a political space where uh, more will be inclu included, uh, given the background of the, of the country vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, politics, but it also uh, wanted to maintain what it was getting successful uh, on education, health, foreign policy, defense, what have you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in short, uh, the Ethiopian people demanded more uh, because of their 27 years of experience of uh, self rule, economy grows, what have you, what they got is the worst. This <laughs> new uh, uh, leadership, so-called change leadership, came to power. Change makers, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, what we have today is a very fragile state, a chaotic state, and uh, honestly speaking, a very scary situation. I say this because 
uh, Ethiopia have seen in the last two years, displacement of people, unprecedented in its history. Mm -hmm. Some even say that it surpassed the uh, uh, disastrous resettlement program of the Derg government in terms mm -hmm. of its mm -hmm. human cost. Mm -hmm. We have uh, mob justice throughout the country. Uh, we have vigil vigilante gr groups uh, reigning all over the country. Many parts of the country is under a military command. Uh, and people are victimized because of who you are, because of who they are, uh, because of their national origin, nationality origin, because of the, the language they speak, the human suffering, uh, the loss of property, and uh, uh, the lack of uh, clear uh, way forward. Therefore, Ethiopia today, uh, some even say, manifests an early uh, sign of a failing state. Oh, if we continue like that, uh, we may be for a larger disaster. So this is just, uh, in short, uh, what the state of affairs of Ethiopia looks like. Right now. Today, yes. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, what the international community uh, understands or knows it at this very moment is quite different from what you said. It is, especially since the last two years, as you mentioned, it is uh, um, carrying out or undertaking quite uh, sweeping reforms in all aspects, right? But contrary to that, you and uh, your party, TPLF, and the majority people of Tigray are saying the country is right now in danger even far beyond that, it is on the, on the brink of being disintegrated. What is the point? Who do you think is uh, misperceiving the situation right now? Uh, well, let me qualify what, uh, what I believe is the international community's perception. To begin with, not all members of the international community, especially today, uh, perceived uh, differently than what is on the ground. Okay. Uh, there are those uh, that have come to realize what they felt was a better leadership that will build upon what the government has uh, done for the last 27 years is in fact uh, deteriorating from day to day. Mm -hmm. uh, major Western medias are reporting Researchers, academicians, uh, opinion makers have uh, started really addressing the real issue on the ground. Yes, on the other hand, uh, you are right. There are those, especially the United States, that have uh, continued uh, to sponsor and support the current state of affairs in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Uh, from my interactions with some uh, members of the U.S. Uh, government uh, during my travels to the States and here in Ethiopia, uh, there are even some in the United States government that acknowledge uh, things are not going the way they expect them to go. Mm -hmm. But they continue to support the current so-called uh, change leadership, even if it is at the expense of the Ethiopian people. And many people are wondering why this happens. Well, uh, it is simply uh, because of their own national interests. The w only one, the, 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 the basically the number one prerequisite is that a, a government of like Ethiopia has to accept to get support from the United States is it has to embrace their new uh, liberalism uh, in any aspect of its life, in economy, in foreign policy. This is their, basically the litmus test. As long as you embrace this, even if they see disaster uh, on the way, they will support you. It is their history, they will support you. Uh, in any way they, 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 they can. So long as and their, their interest is fulfilled. 
Well, it is a matter of national interest. It mm. is not even, you know, the, 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 uh, the, if you see it from the uh, U.S. government point of view, if you're going to liberalize the economy and uh, uh, allow U.S. and other companies to take over these huge government uh, companies, you know, uh, uh, sectors, mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to, to let go your uh, foreign policy prerogative and say uh, we are not going to work uh, with China or we're not going to work with everybody but you will have the upper hand and Ethiopia will be the stepping ground to, for U.S. Uh, dominance in Africa. All the things that the United States government uh, wants to do they will support you. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, I, I, I am not surprised. As far as they are concerned, it is their national interest. As far as they are concerned, they, 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 they may be making mistakes in the long term by alienating the Ethiopian people, uh, supporting a very uh, narrow-minded uh, leadership. But... Uh, I have watched American politics almost all my adult life, mm -hmm. and they, they continue to do this uh, throughout, throughout the world. They not only support a government that came uh, somehow through uh, election and later on change its name, what have you, they even support uh, outright dictators if they see that they, they are uh, supporting their, uh, their political uh, ideology and what have you. Uh, but uh, in this regard, let's stay here. Uh, the majority of those who propagate such news stories are uh, the majority, I said, from Tigray and the TPLF as a party. Those are quite many uh, in other parts of the nation. Uh, what if you are doing or saying so for uh, you are forced to leave the National Palace? Well, uh, I don't think what is being said uh, from this region, from where I am uh, residing in Tigray, uh, is any different from the rest of the country. I genuinely believe that basically the narrative is the same. <laughs> Let me explain. Mm -hmm. First of all, all uh, the disastrous things that I mentioned earlier, the displacement, the days, the uh, hate crime, the destruction of property, all the things that we have witnessed, unfortunately, in the last couple of years, exclusively happened outside Tigray. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Tigrayans were the first victims of uh, these uh, 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 crimes. Okay. and continue to be victimized. But if you now compare all the atrocities, the displacements that are happening in the rest of cant the country versus what's happening in Ethiopia, it is, all, it is exclusively happening in all other parts of Ethiopia, with the exception of maybe uh, two or so regions. Uh, including Tigray. Therefore, why would the rest of Ethiopian nation and nationalities will have a different narrative as to what we are saying in the state of affairs of the current uh, Ethiopian situation? Now, what has happened is uh, during this process of called, so called uh, change or reform, uh, the, the then ruling party, EPRDF, uh, abandoned the elite of the different nation and nationalities that was organized in the ruling class uh, betrayed and abandoned mm -hmm. their constituency and uh, they joined the bandwagon of what you call the prosperity party. Mm -hmm. Now uh, it is, it is my understanding, it is my belief that these political parties have, by omission or commission, created the situation that 
its consequence was human cost. They are to be accountable for it. <laughs> Therefore, uh, they have to continue on this path instead of arresting it until the, the, the time comes where it will be irreversible <laughs> and they will be accountable, I'm sure, at one time in, in, in the political process of Ethiopia. Therefore, it is not that the other regions don't have this, the same narrative, the same concerns, because the huge uh, price is paid by them. It is just their elites and the political parties continue to dominate the political space. Mm -hmm. they, are, they have the upper hand in the government apparatus. They, contr they control the media. They control uh, uh, public opinion. Uh, because they have the finance, they can deploy a huge number of people. Uh, whereas in the case of Tigray, this uh, region uh, has the TPLF still uh, as its government and its party. Uh, it hasn't abandoned its cause. And therefore, it's, uh, it's the way it is dealing with issues. Uh, nobody is stopping it, like the others are muzzled. Uh, otherwise, there is no different uh, understanding of what was happening. Let me tell you one example. Okay. Uh, none other the Prime Minister himself has, on more than one occasion, uh, uh, accepted that we are in this horrendous situation in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Simply, he said that unless we do something, we could be for a worst situation in Ethiopia. The mm -hmm. difference is, you know, he pushes the blame to others, not the, the, the government uh, in position. Therefore, the narrative in Ethiopia today domestically is unanimous. Mm -hmm. That we don't know where we're heading. There is a government that is not uh, upholding the constitution. Uh, rule of law has uh, uh, left the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, uh, where we differ maybe is even those that are supporting the, the current government, that are ardent supporters, and those that are detractors, the, 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 the difference is not in the diagnosis of where Ethiopia is right now, but uh, what, how to go about arresting this uh, disaster situation. Therefore, uh, as I said, there is no different narrative in Ethiopia, but many uh, regions, many uh, people, don't have the access as the Their voices are suppressed. Exactly. They are muzzled. As I said, the, the prosperity party of the Apran, the government is not uh, uh, to let them speak their mind, but they uh, feel the pain as much as the Tigrayan people do. Okay. Uh, do you think uh, uh, Tigrayans had been and are still being uh, targeted? Of course I do. I okay. mean, uh, what are the manifestations look, on the ground? Look, the, mm. the, 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 first of all, when this new uh, so-called uh, change leadership came, uh, it initialized uh, what I consider uh, demonizing and uh, hate politics as a, as a government uh, institution. Uh, none other than the Prime Minister did say that we have what we call daylight scavengers, hyenas. Mm -hmm. And he was saying this specifically to a specific group of people, Tigrayan, uh, Tigrayan leaders, Tigrayan party leaders, Tigrayan business people, Tigrayan people as a whole. He did say uh, that uh, in the last uh, 27 years, we were in the dark, and the sole responsibility lies on one group, that uh, the grand people subjected us, the grand leadership, the TPLF subjected uh, the Ethiopians to this. Uh, therefore, what, uh, what followed is the violence against the Grands. Uh, mainly from the Amhara region at the beginning. Uh, you know, uh, it is not a long ago that we were uh, receiving 
uh, corpse in this region. And the Tigray people were uh, mesmerized. They were, they were wondering what happened. After all the sacrifice we paid to bring Ethiopia where it is today, uh, why are Tigrayans being targeted? Why are they killed uh, uh, and their property destructed? Therefore, uh, as you know, uh, the estimate is there are close to 1,800, 900 uh, Tigrayans in jail today, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because of who they are, because of their uh, et ethnic identity. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, that does not mean and today, the, 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 the situation is limited to Tigrayans. When you play with fire, when you play with hate politics, mm. when, you, when you play with hate crimes, you never know when it is going to come and haunt you. Therefore, yes, mm. others are even in sheer numbers uh, paying more price. More people have died mm. in Somali and Ogaden uh, and uh, Oromia region than anywhere else in terms of uh, violence. Uh, the Amhara region has lost its leaders because of this situation. We have lost generals uh, who, who, who are the, uh, the, the, the status of this country in terms of its uh, uh, sovereignty. Therefore, uh, you know, ethnic profiling was done to blame the Tigrayans for all the atrocities that happened in Ethiopia. During when you say in the national television mm -hmm. that uh, Tigrinya, Tigrinya, Tigrinya speaking, people were doing all this inhumane atrocities. What was the whole idea? In other countries, this is forbidden. This is called ethnic profiling. You accuse a person of a crime, not because associating with any ethnic background or nationality. Therefore, uh, there is no any doubt in my mind uh, that they started uh, targeting Tigrayans demonizing Tigrayans, they continue to do that, but uh, it has also spilled over and it is affecting all Ethiopians today. Uh, but what do you think could be the reason behind uh, for uh, targeting Tigrayans plus for blaming Tigrayans in TPLF for all chaos here and there in the country? Uh, let, let you know. Let me tell you what what I think has happened. Uh, the new so-called new leadership in Ethiopia that came from within the APRDF has organized itself uh, and charted a path completely to undo what the APRDF has done. stood for okay. for twenty seven years. Mm -hmm. We have to be frankly talking about what's up. It has declared the leader of this reform, the prime minister has his, himself said, we are not trying to reform this government. We are to change the system. The APRDF did overthrow the Dirk and brought a new system. And the so-called prosperity party claims that its intention is to undo and change a system. It is not reforming, but changing the whole thing. Of, to those, do, of those 27 years? Of those. Whatever the PRDF stood is for, you have to. We did, we did change. We did overthrow the Dirk, and we didn't take anything from the Dirk except the country. There was nothing we can take for the Dirk has done that is considered worthy taking. Therefore, the new leadership wants to do what the PRDF did to the Dirk. This is coming from. Mm -hmm the mouth of the prime minister. I'm not, I'm not uh, analyzing this or deducting this. This is what he said. Now, what do you need to do to undo uh, the APRDF uh, and bring a new uh, system? First of all, you spouse a different ideology. Mm -hmm. As opposed to a developmental democracy, developmental uh, state uh, economy policy, you embrace neoliberalism. No ifs and buts. And then what do you do? You try to, to change the arrangement of the country where the multinational uh, federal state has become a reality and you have to do everything possible to change this. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, the check and balance will not allow you 
to do that. To do as, as, you, as you please. And then you put uh, in order who will be the most challenging force to stand between you and what you wanted to do. And obviously, the TPLF became the, uh, the number one uh, challenge to be targeted yeah. to this. Mm. And uh, to do that, you have to create an atmosphere in Ethiopia where Ethiopians will see the TPLF and by reduction the Tigray people as against interest, as exploiters, as killers, as human rights abusers, as as group that has monopolized the country. Uh, to get to the, you just can't come and say, we want uh, to change the country and the TPLF is obstacle. You dehumanize this organization that has paid, you know, tremendously for what Ethiopia has to, uh, has come. Therefore, I'm not surprised. You know, either you you are with them or if you are against them, they have to do everything. And they, they did practically. To, to this day, there is uh, no federal road functioning uh, via Gondor and Wolo. Why? Mm -hmm. Is it because uh, the, there is a disturbance in Tigray, therefore low risk cannot come because they may be uh, burned? I don't know. This is the most peaceful region of the country. Therefore, uh, this uh, new leadership, uh, uh, you know, at first, it tried to play games that they are not against the Tigray people, they are against the TPLF, and then later on they said, not all TPLF, but some are bad, some are good, as if uh, uh, the TPLF organization is any different from others. So, uh, to this date, the federal government continues to marginalize uh, the Tigrayan people, the Tigray government, and of course the TPLF. To this day, to this hour, mm -hmm. uh, doing everything possible because it is uh, uh, the number one uh, threat to what they wanted to achieve. It will remain so until uh, the Tigray people uh, uh, organize among, uh, along other Ethiopians and the challenge comes not only from this region but from other parts of Ethiopia. Okay, but uh, there is something which seems contrary to what you say right now. For instance, we can take the uh, 2019 uh, Nobel Peace Prize award, was awarded, I mean, yes. to uh, the Prime Minister who is leading uh, this change maker uh, you mentioned so far, especially for the uh, decisive initiative he took to resolve the border conflict between uh, Ethiopia and neighboring country Eritrea. So uh, how can you uh, balance these two things uh, which are quite contrary to each other? No, what I, say, what I said is that uh, the West, especially the United States, continues to support uh, this leadership and, and it will do everything to sustain it. This is my belief uh, as of now. Uh, what uh, has happened is uh, the, the United States was behind the nomination uh, of the Prime Minister for the uh, Nobel Peace Prize mm -hmm. from day one, mm -hmm. uh, among others, but mainly the United States. And uh, you don't have to take my word for it. The president of the United States says, I prevented Ethiopia from a brink of war, from going to war. I don't know what he was talking about. And I should have been the one who should have been given the Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm not a, a big fan of uh, President Trump, mm -hmm. the president is known to speak his mind. And I believe him. Uh, that he has made a deal, and he, sh you know, he claims that he has, uh, uh, he has to get the Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. Why does they do this? First of all, to be fair, 
when the, the, the current prime minister, based on the decision of the APRDF, took the initiative to, to the, with Eritrea to make peace, at its face value, this deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. I am, as far as I am concerned. Mm -hmm. It deserves, it merits any of these uh, leaders. As much, both of them should have received the Nobel Peace Prize if it was genuine. But it wasn't genuine. The peace deal between Ethiopia and Eritrea has been from day one based on conspiracy and uh, uh, something that no, 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 no Ethiopian institutions or Eritrean uh, citizens know what was all the deal about. It was not genuine, it was not transparent. So it was behind the curtain. It was, therefore at face value, when two countries come to this after a long uh, no war, no peace situation, I will be the first one to say, if it is a genuine peace, our, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia and the President of Eritrea should both be uh, given the award. applauded and given a Nobel Peace Prize. Why do the Americans do this? First of all, uh, the, 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 uh, as I said earlier, uh, this peace initiative, as, as we speak today, as much as we want it to go in a better situation, uh, it is not genuinely implemented. A peace uh, deal with uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea should matter to the people of Ethiopia and Eritrea. Mm -hmm. The people at the border should do commerce. Uh, there should be movement of uh, people and goods across the border. Mm -hmm. There should be Eritrean government institutions and Ethiopian government institutions should know what to do mm -hmm. in trade, in the port, what have you. Uh, to this day, none of this is happening. The Ethiopian parliament doesn't know what the, the agreement is to this day. It's the highest legislative body in the country. Of they course, don't know what it is so far. We don't know. And we cannot ask of the Eritrea because there is no such thing as mm. legislative body in Eritrea. Therefore, the, 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 even though, as I said, whatever uh, we have with Eritrea, we should maintain it and go for the full-fledged reconciliation of these two countries. As of this moment and that moment, I don't think the, 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 the Prime Minister alone deserves the peace process because the peace uh, Nobel Prize. But the Americans felt uh, they should do this. This, I believe, was the official reason that they promoted. The main reason is different. As I told you earlier, even the Americans do realize that things are not getting uh, better. better. Uh, their boy, you know, at the uh, palace uh, is not delivering as much as they expected. And they know this. They know what's happening in Ethiopia much more better than I know. Mm -hmm. All the things that are happening. At that particular time, so much bad has happened in Ethiopia. As I told you, the displacement, the violence, uh, uh, you know, government apparatus has, has collapsed. Leaders have been assassinated in data. Military commanders have been killed. And the Americans felt they have to inject something as a huge treasure, as a Nobel Peace Prize, simply to support the new leadership. This is the main reason they worked so hard. Because so, so it's a uh, play politics. It is. And it did work for a few weeks, mm -hmm. I don't know, a month. The whole uh, Addis crowd and uh, uh, other places the talk of the town was this Nobel Peace Prize. How Ethiopians genuinely even felt this would uplift us uh, to from where we were. Uh, I didn't believe that because this 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 was not a, the, the the injection we needed 
uh, in Ethiopia. So the Americans, as always, felt they have to do something to support the leadership, especially the prime minister, and uh, say, well, if he is getting this uh, Nobel Peace Prize, he must be doing something fantastic. So forget the, all the things that you see in Ethiopia. But I don't think nobody talks about it today. And it, mm -hmm. it, just, it didn't last that long because it's mm -hmm. not reality. Mm -hmm. To begin with, the, the one uh, basic reason should have been the peace with Eritrea without any conspiracy, without any hidden agenda. And if that was the case, despite what the West thinks about uh, Eritrean president, both of them should have been awarded. But that was not the case. It was only to help our uh, leaders continue uh, what they are doing on behalf of the West. Okay. Um, let's proceed to another issue. Uh, Ethiopians are uh, uh, known for their strong social fabrics. Uh, what do you think are these strong social fabrics that uh, help them live together or in harmony? And the situation, uh, uh, the current situation seems a bit different from what we know so far. What happened to these uh, strong social fabrics? Uh, I'm not a social scientist, and this may need uh, uh, scientific know, analysis. Maybe, some yeah. analysis, but I will tell you from my from my own personal experience. Okay. Uh, I was assigned overseas in uh, four or five embassies, beginning the change of government in Addis, mm -hmm. uh, until I resigned from the foreign ministry four, year, four years back. Okay. And uh, what I witnessed in my life, in the West, in, in, in Europe, in America, in the Middle East, uh, what, we call, what I call this toxic diaspora, uh, and organized political groups, mm -hmm. uh, preached hate uh, politics, uh, declared uh, ethnic cleansing Genocide. in Ethiopia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, and on their uh, radio stations, television stations, and political organizations also work so hard with uh, hostile countries like Eritrea and Egypt mm -hmm. to undo what was happening in Ethiopia. Uh, as I said, I will only talk about my experience. From the, all these years, when I was uh, working with the diaspora, uh, these groups were bent on uh, preaching uh, differences in Ethiopia, completely disregarding to the, the age-long social fabrics that brought us together. Uh, I was, uh, in many occasions, uh, with Ethiopian diasporas, trying to, to promote even the grand uh, Ethiopian rights down bonds. And I heard so-called patriotic Ethiopians, <laughs> learned Ethiopians, in the diaspora saying they would rather see uh, it demolish and they are willing to do anything than see it built under the watch of Oyane. Uh, political groups were saying with these hostile countries being hosted, they said, we will stop it. If, if you help us change the government, the number one will do is stop the Iranian system uh, from being built. And uh, they were getting all the support they can. And then what happened? Uh, at that particular time, all this uh, political uh, groups, some of them classified terrorists, these diasporas, they were kept at bay by the government in Ethiopia. You have to maintain law and order. This is a very diversified country, and you cannot allow 
things to go out of hand and uh, it, uh, everybody to get at everybody's neck. Unfortunately, when the new leadership came, not only did it brought these uh, groups and diasporas uh, to Ethiopia without any check, without any precondition, without even asking them to apologize for what we were doing before that, they were invited with a red carpet and their views were institutionalized as part and parcel of the government propaganda. Mm -hmm. Finish. The, 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 the Prime Minister said some of the words that this uh, is like. used to say. As I told you earlier, Okay. Why are you classifying a group of people as uh, daylight, day, day, daylight uh, hyenas, mm. scavengers? Mm. Why? Why are you calling them, uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, unknowns? You know, like uh, strangers in your own country. Mm. Mm. The what, what does it mean? These were saying the same thing. Mm. Why do they say a very minority was imposing on you and, uh, you know, therefore, this is a gating of the mind. The uh, opposition groups didn't come to Ethiopia. I'm not saying they shouldn't have been invited. They should have come to Ethiopia under certain circumstances that they cannot do this. They cannot come and create violence and turmoil within ethnic groups, nationalities in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. They cannot preach hate politics. They cannot, you know, they, they have to uh, do their whatever they have to do within the constitution. They can even object to the constitution while working against within it. Within a given legal framework. Yes. Yeah. Therefore, what do you expect? When this happens, when head politics is, uh, uh, you know, extremists are institutionalized, there is no check on them. Mm -hmm. The security apparatus is demolished. When those people that have been checking on them, those that have been working 24 hours to protect this country are considered criminals because they, they sabotage uh, terrorist activities. You shouldn't be surprised that all this uh, uh, disintegration of social fabric should happen to Ethiopia. This, this is what I personally believe. Uh, uh, it, 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 is a, it is a combination of things. These uh, uh, people that has completely objected the multinational politics of Ethiopia in any aspect. For 25, 77 years, they were given the upper hand in media, in institutions. They have objected to it from day one. And they, are right, they have every right to object it. But when the government uh, supports them, endorses them, uh, you know, when a, 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 a television uh, station that I have watched in the United States for years that preached et ethnic cleansing, genocide. 95% mm -hmm. of Ethiopians should to get stand rid of against. the 5%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were not even apologize. They, they were not even asked to Apolog apologize by the government. Mm -hmm. They were invited to Manelik Palace and to what have you, and they were given this credit that they were the responsible party to bring down the APRDF government. I, I saw mm. in my own eyes when they say, we did it. Mm. Well, some of us in Washington, another one in uh, Menelik, we did get rid of this and now they are at uh, uh, each other's throats because uh, none, none of them can get all the things they wanted thanks to the Ethiopian people. That's not going mm. to happen. Mm -hmm. We're not going to allow this constitution to get away. They, they, they're not going to be a unitary state in Ethiopia. Uh, you know, uh, therefore, they themselves will be disenchanted. They are still now disenchanted. I will tell you one example. Mm -hmm. A so-called journalist that I know personally, uh, who, uh, who said one of the things, who was one of the people who said what I told you earlier, that they would rather... Uh, they are committed to destroy the dam uh, so long as Wayani is in power. They don't care. Now he's playing for, he says he's committed to defend the dam 
<laughs> the same individual. Mm -hmm. That is called hate politics, pure and simple. Just because there was a prime minister in Ethiopia that he didn't like because of his national uh, uh, you know, identity, he was going to let go this uh, national project. Now, but now he changed even his mind. Even now he's saying because uh, he's, he's, he, he doesn't get, uh, he's not getting along as before with the prime minister. So he thinks he's good. It is not based on the interest of Ethiopia. It is based uh, on uh, opposing or supporting who is on the chair of, of the government. So for th this is what contributed. There may be other factors, uh, but this is what, what contributed to the disintegration of what Ethiopians value the most, the social fabric that kept us, held us together for centuries. Uh, it is an institutional uh, doing. It is not by accident. These Tumwagg uh, leaders, uh, populist leaders, they just uh, get the, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, the gene out of the box wi wi without seeing its uh, consequences. Hmm. Uh, do you think uh, Ambassador uh, Abiy's popularity is still out there as compared to uh, uh, it was two years back? Pardon me? I didn't hear what you said. Do you think Abiy's popularity is still out there as compared to uh, it was two years back? Abiy? Do, 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 do I think his, uh, his popularity uh, is still out there? Do you think he is still popular? as compared to he was two years back, that's the point. It must be a joke, I mean... <laughs> <laughs>